So hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know I've been a little bit quiet here. I was just busy with lots of projects behind the scenes and whenever I start working on something, I just go into this tunnel of work and I can't focus on many things because um, when I work on something, I need to focus fully. And if I also have to think about, I need to post here, I need to share this, I'm like, like all over the place. So I just said, okay, I just need to be honest and admit that I can't keep up with everything if I have a project that um, I need my full focus. So it's again, it was in the book. Um, if you're in my newsletter, I wrote it. Uh, and also in my previous videos, I mentioned the book Finish, where uh, John Acuff was saying that sometimes if you want to finish something, you just need to accept the fact that you will suck at a few things. Like you will neglect this, you will neglect that. Um, but at least you get things done and then you can reactivate all these things that you neglected. So we, I will do this slowly but surely. Um, just sometimes you just need to get back and start uh, being in action to create momentum. Um, so that's why I'm here. I'm showing up and want to answer some questions that you have just so we can catch up, uh, help you with a few things that you're struggling with. And yeah. So I have my, so yesterday, so some time ago, I asked you uh, if you have any questions and then I just took some screenshots of a few questions that were, um, I saw a pattern. Some people asked the same questions. So I just took one of those and um, yeah, so there were lots of questions and I can't reply to everything. Uh, so I will answer everything that I have here. And then if there is more time and you still up for more questions, you can then submit in the, in the chat and I will answer them as well. I'll try to uh, answer as many as, as I can. Deal? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So the first, first question is by Ruman Khan. Hello, Mako, how are you? And how are you spending your time during Corona days? What is Corona condition in your country? Um, so I am living in Germany. So here the things are um, slightly going back to normal. We still have to wear um, masks in like transportation when we go to shops or if there's like, um, yeah, anywhere where a lot of people are. And for example, in restaurants, you need to, um like wear your mask go through the people sit on your table and then you can start um, i can remove your mask but other than that you need to um yeah like you can walk around easily um the light is aw awful here uh but yeah so so slowly getting better it's still i I still like I haven't been to to the gym in months and I feel awful like I need movement and I can uh, basically work at home work out at home but it's just not the same so let me quickly change the set the light because it's just awful let me see here let me do this Okay, so a little darker. I don't know, this, the light is just awful today. I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, sometimes you need to DIY everything yourself and you're the only cameraman and camera woman and person in the, on the camera. Um, so yeah. But yeah, so so we're getting better, and I'm working. Luckily, I'm working. I'm working full time uh, for myself. Basically, I uh, I was writing my book. I finished it. I'm still uh, have to go back and forth. I um, like with the publisher. I finished the cover for the book. I will show you at some point. Um, then I, I launched my course, my watercolor course, the other a few weeks ago, and I was. Uh, going live in my course, I was uh, helping people. So I was like spending most of the time at home, teaching, writing, uh, learning myself also. So I was quite busy. So some people were like, I'm so bored, I'm so bored. And I was like, I, I've 
like for me it's like I still had so much to do and I was lucky that I had something to do like I had like, still a job where I could work and so I'm really grateful for what, what I'm doing and what I can do from home so um, the next question was uh, by uh, Abin Naya I face so many discouraging comments just because my art is not realistic how to make people understand about painting styles they all want me to paint portraits or trees. Uh, I understand like some people just have their own vision of what art is, what um, what is considered art. And I, I for me, I, oh, like years ago, I just ditched this. Like I, I real like I accepted the fact that some people just won't um, won't understand some st styles and they will only focus on just one and this is the true art form and everything is just garbage so I was like why bother convincing people and sh show them what art like there are a lot of different art styles so I just focus on doing what I enjoy and will paint it and I know sometimes my style will change sometimes I might paint just a, just one topic or one style and then some at some point maybe I want to change so it's really about you it's your or it's your hobby or your um uh, job or anything that you enjoy doing so you should do it from your heart and do what you like not someone else tells you you need to do because art is so unique so personal and I don't think you will enjoy painting or creating anything that is not truly what you enjoy doing like if someone will tell you paint realistic portraits but you rather paint flowers or abstract or something completely different then you won't enjoy it you will like sitting there be frustrated and like questioning what you're doing so focus on what you enjoy and if you feel like this is not resonating with you this topic is not just interesting to you just switch it's, it's totally fine you don't have to force yourself to paint something or um, paint a certain style just because others do this or other people tell you you need to do this so just really listen to yourself and do what feels good to you and paint what what feels good to you um let's see here darren next question is by darren um from darren how to english i, for, I just feel like i forgot english uh what if you did live watercolor classes and also cover basics on how to get your watercolor paints right for those especially starting out I actually did a few live uh, streams. I think it was in May. Each week we had a live painting session and lots of people joined and it was super fun. We had, um, I started a Facebook group. If you haven't joined it, it's called Painting Out Loud and the link is in the description box below. And you can join and share your art, uh, give feedback. Um, so it's like a, a small community of people right now who just share their art, feedback, help each other. And you can ask for feedback also. So it's really fun to be actually in a community and learn together and so that's why I created my watercolor course that I launched in June um, some of you joined my mini series some um, joined the uh, the main course also and it was so fun to just enjoy and help people learn and be active there because whenever I have live painting sessions like for example on my YouTube channel there's just so many people and I come in go out and I can't really engage and help like if there's a person who has a question I can just because there's so many um, questions so many people there's spam sometimes so um, that's why I decided to start uh, this uh, course um, Miss SA just donated 2500 CRS I'm not quite sure what that that is well, um, let me google this Costa Rican. Ah, Costa Rican. Nice. Um, I'm going to Frankfurt next year. Where can I where um where can I buy schminke gouache and watercolors? Like a good art store. I also like to buy paper and brushes. Frankfurt. I don't know exactly what shops there are, but Frankfurt probably has Bösner, um, Bösner and um Idee is also a shop, but look for um shops that have watercolor like art supplies like a Bosna is a good a shop a big shop um today and yeah I don't know what other we have also like Mod Modulor but it's in Berlin 
And we also have um, Gerstecker, but it's also somewhere else. I'm not sure. It's not in Frankfurt. But yeah, look for Bösenheim. They must have it. Frankfurt. Um, mm -mm. Okay. So yeah. Um, next question was... Uh, repeat or evolve? Um, how do you manage your time? Uh, I'm sometimes, still, I still struggle to really find the perfect, not perfect, but the, I feel like it always changes the way things work for me. So for example, I, I know I like to do similar things at once. So I, I don't like to have multiple different things. Uh, that have nothing to do with themselves. So I have usually, for example, if I work on videos, I don't have like filming one video here, that one video on the, another day. I batch, like I try to batch as much, much as possible. So for example, if I um, I was filming for my watercolor course and I knew, okay, uh, I have so many vi videos to shoot and I don't want to like be disrupted. I want to be in the flow. So I scheduled my time. So this day is just filming this day is just editing or this day is just, for example, writing the scripts or researching or something like that. And then I focus, also what I learned is that we always feel like we there's so much time basically, or we feel like there's time. So we need to pack as much as possible in one day. And then we feel discouraged that we only finish just one thing uh, of our to-do list of 10 things. And I feel like this is like, who, who said that we need to accomplish 10 things in one day? Maybe it's, it's just not necessary. Like, for example, maybe you have just a project and you can divide it into multiple things. For example, you need to do this and this and that. And then you just focus on two things in one in, in the day. So um, I'm what I'm currently trying to do is each week I have my three big goals so they call it like big threes um i learned this from um, michael hyde full focus um book um and he says so for example pick three things that are important that are you like a, for example a project that needs to get done um and decide on three things that you need to do to move you forward and then each day select three things that you will accomplish so basically you have three to do's each day. And at the end of the week, you accomplished all those three bigger goals. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm scheduling, scheduling, because otherwise I'm just like, so like maybe I should do this, maybe that. And then the whole day is gone. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Um, Savannah asks, you said that you are in the, uh, you are the only one who is doing this as a profession in the online course. So my question is how you really get into it. Um, so I started painting just for fun years ago. It was my hobby. It was just something I naturally started doing because kindergarten, then school art classes. And I, I was good in school. Like I also enjoyed math in the beginning. So uh, I was actually good at, in that. And then slowly it was, became hard and hard and there was just so many subjects to study and I couldn't keep up. Like I was focused on improving on things that I was bad at. So my math, for example, got worse because I couldn't keep up. I also didn't, it took me longer to understand. And then there was also this lesson, this lesson. So I was like, here's my, what I'm good at. I, I enjoy learning, I enjoy practicing. So my art was the thing. And then um, math and other subjects were, just more difficult for me. And I, like, I spent so much time, I got, I got better at these subjects. Um, but then I was like, this is something I'm good at. Why should I, why should I try to somehow get better at things that are not as interesting to me, not that important to me right now? Or um, I'd rather spend this time focusing on what I'm, I naturally uh, enjoy doing more. And so I was like, okay, I accepting the fact that I'm not as good at in, in math, for example, as other people, but that's okay. I will focus on what I'm already good at and get better at that. So I was just doing this, doing this. And then um, of course I had, I graduated, then I had to go to university and I also couldn't decide what should I study. And then I discovered uh, cultural studies and cultural studies also had topics that I enjoyed, for example, art, philosophy, um, uh, media, uh, religion, like all sorts of things where you learned about 
the, the people, like people, culture, what we have in common, what are the differences, and just everything involving the humanity, basically, our cult, different cultures. And, and, and I just doing, did my art thing on the side, and I realized this is something I want to do now. And I know people were still uh, saying, like my family, um, so when are you going to, like when I graduated university, people were saying, so when are you going to look for a job? Because I did my YouTube channel on the side. I did other projects on the side. Um, and my family was always like, so, okay, so, okay, but when were you going to find a real job? And my grandfather was also like, uh, is she really planning to make DIY soaps for children for the rest of her life? And uh, why can't she find a proper job? Like, I don't know, tour, a tour guy or something like that. So it will be always a job available. Um, so there was always this, this kind of like, I did, I was successful in what I'm doing, but still, when are you going to find a job? So, uh, I just kept going, kept going because I knew that this is what I want to do. I felt like it, uh, I felt like this is what I, I want to do. And I sometimes felt like just because I don't want to do things that others are doing, for example, graduate and find a real job, then start a family, then, um, then I don't know, get a promotion, that's life. So, and I was like, no, I, I, I want to get the more complicated route. Uh, and I saw that so, so many other people also are similar to me. There are so many people in art, they're full-time artists, they're full-time business people, full-time anything where people said, why can't you just find a real job? Uh, and I realized that it's not, there's nothing wrong with me. I just needed to focus on really what my calling was and just do that. And I found my people. So I found people who did similar things, uh, maybe in a different, um, they, for example, they didn't didn't do art, but they did something like in, I don't know, fitness or I don't know, fashion or beauty. And this is also not like some, their family were also like saying, what are you doing here? But they just did what they wanted to do, what felt right. And they just pushed. And my parents actually, like the, the final, the, Moral of the story was my parents actually stopped bothering me and just let me do my own thing because they saw, saw there's no point bothering me. I'll still do what I, I feel is right. And they saw that I'm still like, I never like complaining about anything. So I'm good. So yeah, so this is this story. <laughs> like just do your own thing because you know best what's right for you, what you're capable of. Uh, next question is Himan Shi. Any suggestion for people who just started with YouTube? Um, so I started my YouTube channel, I think, over seven years ago. And when I started my YouTube channel, I just wanted to share my ideas, and I focused on really just sharing ideas that I enjoy. I never focused because I, there were so many people who just chased like viral topics, viral um, video ideas, and you just attract all sorts of people that maybe are not interested in other content and they just subscribe and then they just, I don't know, they just attract different people. And then when something doesn't work out, then you're like, okay, so why should I post? Like what, what videos should I then upload? This doesn't work. This doesn't work. And you get lost. So I would always, um, always focus on your why. So when you start think about what is your message? What do you want to accomplish with your YouTube channel? Uh, what type of content do you want to upload? For example, if, for me, I want to share my ideas and inspire people to get creative, see what they're capable of. Um, I never wanted to like, people were asking, can you make slime videos? I'm like, why? It's not my thing. Like why it's, it's popular, but my goal is completely different. I don't want to chase viral videos, topics just because you get views, because at the end of the day, you, I want to do this long term. And if I focus I would have focused on things like super viral things that I don't really care much about, then I would com be completely lost. I couldn't do this. I feel like a lot of people stopped doing YouTube because they realized it doesn't work anymore. So why bother? Uh, but if you know your why behind your channel, your intentions, your what, you, what your goals are, then you will do this for a long time. And then you might even realize or find something that you are passionate about, maybe create a completely a new business out of it so yeah focus on your why and what you want to do like don't don't chase the numbers don't chase 
viral topic ideas if you don't really care about them. Just focus on what's important to you, what you stand for, the, your values, everything. Mm, let me see here. Um, Fidrina asks, hey, Mako, how do you know what you want to paint every time? I feel like I'm so scared to draw anything, to paint thinking that it won't look nice or good enough. It's like I have no confidence. And this is also a question that I got a lot of times. So let me just quickly... Uh, and when I was start, talk, start, start talking, I'm, I get to breathe and then I, I'm thirsty, stressed and all over the place. So I need to, I, in my live streams, um, when I was painting, I had this uh, sweet uh, person in the chat was saying, uh, Cheryl, she was asking, saying, don't forget to breathe, Mako. <laughs> um, my top is like moving around. Uh, so the question is how how do you uh, how do I, I know what to paint every time and how I feel like when something doesn't work out well, because Fidrina the Fidrina I hope I'm saying this correctly um, she's she's not confident so I I don't attach my like my like, the problem is that sometimes when we paint something we attach everything around like we we attach we are too attached to the outcome. You feel like if if something doesn't work out, it's some, there's something wrong with us. We are not good. We are not talented enough. Um, and we, we kind of attach our self-worth to the outcome. And I'm completely like, I'm not attached to my paintings at all. I'm like, um, I enjoy painting what I, for example, if I, I want to paint something, I paint it. If, if it works out, I enjoy it. I'm enjoying the process. I... Uh, if the painting turns out, I, I like it. If the painting uh, that I painted turns out great and I like it, then I'm happy about it. But if um, something doesn't turn out the way I wanted it, I'm I'm more like, okay, so why? What exactly is in this painting that I don't like? For example, I was working on my book. I have like a stash of paintings where I tested different um, colors, different composition, different topics, and I I mean it looked good in my opinion but something was like off and I didn't know what so I tried different colors different things and then I was like ah oh, this is just the um, for example the colors were just too pale in my opinion and now I made them more vibrant and now everything just looks so much better so for me it's more like the more I fail at something the quicker I, I learn so for me it's like just do just just do a paint as many paintings as you can and really think about what didn't work what worked and then transfer this knowledge to your next painting. Because the problem is that we always feel like um, when something doesn't work out, it's a failure, but it's not a failure. Like you can have 20 paintings that are failures, but they're not, not, there are no failures because this, this stash of paintings that didn't work out, they created eventually this one or two paintings that are just beautiful masterpieces, but you couldn't get there without trying all these different approaches to this painting. So. Don't feel like you you failed or that um, it doesn't look nice. Just really think about exactly what is it, what like be more like use this painting as uh, just data. And you painted something and then think about okay, so how can I improve it next time? And I feel like this is because the way you feel about your art is your own thinking. The art is just art, and then you just say it's beautiful or it's ugly. And it's it's and for some person it be it can be beautiful, but for you it's ugly. So it's just the meaning that you put behind your uh, or on top of what you created. So don't feel like this. It has like just fo just detach yourself um, and just focus on improving, enjoying the process, and seeing as an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to experiment. I always like experiment while I'm painting. Um, I created a painting and then I feel like, okay, let's see, can I do this? Maybe I should add here, maybe I remove this. Oh, it didn't turn out the way I wanted. Okay, next time I won't do this. So it's, I'm more like easy going, um, but it's, it's, I, need to, I think you need to get to this point con by constantly reminding yourself that it's just a painting, it's just a piece of art, a piece of paper and um, yeah, you you just sometimes need to um, invest a lot of bad paintings to get to the good painting, and that's just the paint. This it's just the part of process. So 
Um, don't worry about it. I hope this was helpful. <laughs> um, black liquor, licorice, how to pronounce this? I'm sorry. I'm wondering why you took such a long break and what is your upload schedule? So usually I upload every week, every Saturday, but because I was working on my book and on my mini series, on my course, I just couldn't manage everything. So I had to, I, I prepared a few videos, but I felt behind. So I was like, okay, I can keep up with everything. I just need to accept that. Um, so I was just busy with other projects and I feel like sometimes you just need to, like I had so many ideas that I wanted to create and I felt like it never changes. Like I never got around to do this because I always kept doing the same thing. Like I was uploading every week and I was thinking, but I don't have time to do other things. I need to upload videos. I need, to, but the, and then years went by and I was just so tired of myself that I couldn't um, keep up with everything. And I could, like I have these projects I want to accomplish, but I never get around. So I was just tired of, of myself. So I was like, okay, if I want to change something in my life, I need to change something. And even if it's scary where I'm like not uploading and I sometimes feel like, okay, when I'm not active, will everything fall apart that I created? But at the same time, I will never create something else if I constantly live in this fear. Like I just need to do and try things out. So that's why I was uh, kind of uh, not super active. Um, yeah, I'm just f figuring out what I want. Like sometimes because I was doing YouTube for so long, uh, sometimes I just need to take some time to really think about what I want long term. Um, can I do this forever? What can I do instead or additionally or different? Just like just thinking like. So, yeah. Um, Cheryl uh, says, hey, Marco, I want to ask this. What's your inspiration for doing art until now? And if you could meet your younger self, what would you tell to her? Um so what is your inspiration for doing art until now? I feel like it's just part of who I am. I think just expressing myself, being creative is in learning. I, 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 did, I did a test where it tell, tells me that my number one strength is learning. And I think it was learning. And I just like to learn. And for example, painting, I like to learn new things, new techniques, new ways and get better at that. So for me, it's also like self-care also helps like for example watercolor trains you to let go sometimes and just um, be willing to learn to fail and to learn from everything that you do and uh, if if you could meet my younger self what would I tell her is that um, everything will turn out like everything will fine will be fine uh, people who for example um, I think I told this in one of my live Q and A's or somewhere I don't know um, that I was like the outsider. Um, my parents wouldn't like support what I wanted to do. So there was, on, uh, school wasn't that easy either. I always had to work hard and do this and that. So I've always felt like, why is there so many like obstacles in my way? Like, why is this this? Why is things are that? And was something wrong with me? Um, but at the end of the day, I just, um, it just turned out the way it should be like I learned from everything I got a better a stronger person I created a life that I enjoy and like I have people around me who are loving and supportive so it's just that don't worry everything will be fine even if it doesn't look like it right now uh when you grow up when you're older you will see not, this everything didn't really matter because this was just like the preparation for the real life and the real life will be different so don't worry everything will be fine so that's what I will tell her um Marta says what advice can you give for someone that is only starting to get into watercolor and what materials would be best used that are affordable thank you so much um advice to someone who's just starting out with watercolors uh get the um best watercolor supplies that you can afford I mean doesn't doesn't mean the most expensive just focus on good watercolor paper um, good paint and brushes they don't have to be super super expensive um, but it makes such a difference because I know a lot of people start with super cheap uh, art supplies and then they think oh this is not for me it's just difficult nothing works so they stop 
but it didn't have this was just a surprise and that's why i always say um my, your art supplies do matter it, you might want you might watch a tutorial and you retry it with your supplies that are bad quality and that won't work because it's just the paint doesn't allow it or the paper doesn't allow it and then you feel like it's something wrong with you because uh, there's this misconception that uh, the, the supplies like your, your paper like you can also use drawing paper or just other paper and sometimes it works but for some techniques you can't expect from just regular drawing paper so um good supplies that you can afford don't get don't go for just the cheapest thing because you're just starting out because you want to enjoy your learning experience you don't want to struggle and suffer and feel like you're not talented enough just because you're you didn't, didn't pick the right tools for you um Bob, boba t asks when you start when did you start your art channel do you have an art class um if yeah, so I started my YouTube channel almost eight years ago, I think, and I do have an art class. It's called Roadmap to Watercolor Painting. I have uh, the link in the description box. It's a wait list because the enrollment are closed. But if you want uh, guidance, if you want my help, like per I'm, I'm in there, like I'm helping actively. Um, next week, we have a painting session where you're going to paint live on Zoom. So I'm excited about it. Um, so if you want community and my support, um, more hands-on, um, then join the waitlist, and I will let you know when the doors are open. Um, mm -mm. Stephanie asks, uh, can you share the process of filming a video? Uh, what was your favorite video you filmed? What was your least favorite? Um, so my filming process, um, so I, like I'm changing it right now because I feel like the way I do things, it just takes too much time. Uh, for example, I, I, for example, I brainstorm ideas for painting, uh, painting ideas or topics that I want to cover and batch those. I make like, a day of just researching and writing or uh, testing out ideas and then I film um, one or two videos. Sometimes I can only do one, but I try more and then I edit that. But now I'm, I had uh, sometimes I have help to edit my videos and now um, I have uh, help with it as well so I'm super grateful because I was like in the beginning I was like it needs to be like this way and this it needs to be perfect how can I give it to someone else because I need, I know best for example but then I was like no this is I can't do this anymore I need help and I, this person knows what he's doing so just let him do it and it's so it's so relieving because um, you don't have to do everything yourself sometimes you can just ask for someone who really enjoys doing something that you don't like anymore. And that's totally fine. Um, yeah, so my favorite video, I like my my painting out loud videos because I feel like I can, can connect with everyone on a deeper level uh, because some things are not talked about enough. So I'm talking about them. Um, and my least favorite, I don't know, I don't have any least favorites. Sometimes I, no, I don't. Some, sometimes I it can be that the video is just so much work to film. But at the end of the day, I like it. But if I don't feel like the idea resonates with me, I never film the video. Even if it's super popular and everyone says you need to do this, this is popular, this goes wild. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I'm like, it's not me. I don't want to do this. Um, Sala asks, I started painting after watching your videos. Still, after a lot of practice, I couldn't paint well. I gave up. What should I do? Should I continue? Because I think it's all about talent, which I haven't. Um, I feel like it's really, as I said, you want to detach yourself uh, from the outcome and see this as an opportunity to learn. Even if you create 50 paintings that you don't like, if you go into the painting process with the mindset, okay, even if it doesn't look good, I still enjoyed it. I put, put uh, paint onto paper. I played with paint. I mixed the colors. I enjoyed the process. And next time I'll try it again. And if you have certain expectations, every time you sit down and like, okay, I want to paint this perfect painting. And then you start and then it, it, it doesn't work out. You're like, it's just so frustrated. And you just don't put your best self um in the process like sometimes when I'm just okay let's test out this painting idea I, I just quickly sketch something with my watercolors and then it looks good and like yeah that's awesome and then and I'm like okay now 
for the official painting, let's make this into a video. Now it needs to be a certain way. And then it's just like, it doesn't work out anymore. It's just like, I just I go in with this attitude and this expectations and I'm just forcing everything and it just never works out. So I train myself to whenever I start painting something that it's, it's just, I will play, I will just enjoy, focus on the painting process and see it as a just a piece of practice also and not just forcing myself to create something a certain way and this really helps so this might help like just um don't put so much pressure on you and just practice and be not just I don't want to say just practice because it's not really helpful so that's why I'm saying when you paint something if you see okay this I couldn't blend something ni uh, nicely or this looks off or maybe this is maybe something is like you could change like be more um mindful about what you created and how can you improve not just painting randomly randomly hoping for the best just be really intentional and be focused and um this is like i think it's called like effective learning where you actually create something and then you analyze basically um yeah mm. Um, Vlad asks, do you have other hobbies? Um, I actually like, because actually painting was my hobby, but it turned into a job. Basically, I don't have a real, like right now, I'm very invested into what I'm doing. Like I'm writing my book, um, the course. And so what I did, I actually started growing tomatoes on my balcony. So this is my new hobby. My, my balcony is, I have like least 10 maybe even more I think 15 like tomatoes like all these strings of tomatoes growing uh my like there's no space to sit almost but I'm excited like I always go uh, in the morning to um check on my tomatoes they're still green but they're like growing and it's just like like it's maybe I'm too obsessive with them now because I it's fascinating to me that you have this little little seed and then you have a big huge plants and it grows tomatoes this is fascinating for me so yeah so and usually I used to play a lot of video games went to the gym when we could um just self-care hobbies I didn't I, sometimes it's really also really relaxing just to paint for fun because it when art becomes your job it's you never do this just for fun you just do it because it's your job you still enjoy it but it's still different so I'm trying to also um, take online classes and learn something and just paint for myself. I don't even share it online because I don't want to have this pressure. Okay, I need to post something. So I might, I just, I need to paint something just so I can post it. And then it's just like the whole purpose is gone. Um, uh, and I use man ask, Hey, Michael, ever since I've started watching your videos, I've learned so many new st stuff. I didn't even know it existed. You are like the big sister to me. So my question is, if you ever get a chance to teach someone except YouTube and Skillshare, like in real life, would you? And yes, you should definitely go, go out a lot more once the pandemic is over. Um, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, so I don't have, I, I don't know, I, I don't have Skillshare classes right now. Um, and I would love to do like live workshops with people where we can learn together and meet um because we can do this um I, I really enjoy having my online course now where we can hang out learn together paint together and just have good time um with youtube it's sometimes difficult because there's so many people and so many comments and i can't reply to everything it's just i feel like i put out my content but there's this distance so having people actually post their um results their wins and just be so loving in a Facebook group, for example, it's just su such a different feeling. So, yeah. Um, Shruti asks, Meiko, uh, when you, we feel like our painting is totally doomed, uh, it did not go as you expected, what would you do? What do you think it's best to do? Just move on and try, try it again. Sometimes you already put your ideas onto the paper and now you can work from there. So, because sometimes you spend so much time thinking about the perfect idea, the perfect everything, and then we actually start doing it. And then we figure out, oh, this is, I didn't, I didn't think of that. And this also didn't work as I imagined. And it's like, 
that's why the the earlier and the faster you start doing something and actually by by doing it and during the process you learn so much more than waiting for the perfect idea perfect everything um just start and learn along the way and if if something doesn't turn out it's amazing you already put effort into it you leveled up a little bit now you can use this knowledge for your other painting so it's basically like in life it's like you always want to figure everything out before we start, but then we start doing something and things happen that we never expected. So how can you plan ahead? So just you have a plan, but then also be willing to adjust and learn along the way. You don't have to figure, you don't have to have everything figured out. Um, creative Kanak. Uh, I had a question on how to decide what you want to draw or find your art style. I'm writing this question because I'm stuck in the same situation. Um, it's just like I ask myself what I'm feeling right now. For example, if it's summer and hot, um, I had this like in my master class, I told you this idea of brainstorm party where you just have one topic, like for example, summer, and then you think about all the different things that you associate with summer and then you just brainstorm it's like mind mapping basically you have one topic in the middle and then you branch out with all sorts of things that you connect and then just pick something that you want to paint so and art style I don't even worry about art style I right now for example I'm focusing on actually just learning learning new techniques new ways see how other artists paint and um, see what other art styles are there because sometimes Again, we are focused on art style that we never paint anything. Just learn and learn and absorb. And then eventually you, even when you paint, you don't realize that you have already a style. Um, just focus on learning and painting. And then for example, if you learn something, a cool trick or technique, use this in the painting and see how, how you can uh, implement this into your own art style and your own art painting, uh, art piece. Um, so don't start a painting with, okay, now I want to make it into a perfect art style that is unique or something. Just focus on uh, painting and it will, it will evolve eventually. It's more, the more you paint, the more you learn. Um, Aaron asks, does art really has a scope to earn? Uh, yes, definitely. I have lots of uh, artist friends who are full-time artists. For example, Jenna Rainey, she is um, she has also courses, but also she is uh, a, a how is it called like a surface pattern and a, uh, like a designer. She designs different patterns and paintings, and they are printed on fabric, on uh, showcase notepads, notebooks, like towels, like a surface pattern designer or something like that. I think it's called. Um, so you basically create one pattern and then and the brand the manufacturer they printed on everything that they wanted and you get like uh, royalties for example um so every time someone buys a towel you get a percentage of the sale i don't know exactly how this works because i i want to learn more about it but basically you earn by some, something every time someone buys and if you go to shops you'll see designs on tissue papers on toilet papers on towels on I don't know everything. There's always an artist behind it, and someone. There are always people looking for artists to to decorate things, to design things, and you can also teach. You can uh, sell your art, like prints or your original art. There's just so many things. Like as I said, don't don't limit your life by things that people think is possible. Like if your parents or someone or your family says this is impossible, this is too difficult, this is not realistic. Surround yourself with people, look for people who do what you want to do and learn from them and see what they're doing. Because just because your family says it's not possible doesn't mean it's actually not possible. You know, it's, you know best what you can, you are capable of. And if there are people who already achieved what you want to achieve, so why can't you achieve that? So I hope this helps. Um, mm -mm. Hey Mika, I'm a new YouTuber here and I would like to know some easy ways I could grow my channel. Um, again, focus on videos that you enjoy doing because you want to be consistent. Uh, something that people actually want to see also. For example, uh, if someone's looking for a certain topic and you actually know something about it, post about this. Like you want to help, you, you need to want, you want to find a balance between 
what you enjoy doing and what your audience would possibly look for. Um, so if you just randomly post anything, people will be like, what is this channel about? Is it about painting? Is it about computer or is it sports, beauty? If it's like random things, you want to be more consistent with what you upload. So you, people know what you expect. Mm. Uh -uh. Uh, Ariel asks, I would like to ask an old but gold question, pretty banal maybe, but how to overcome art block, especially since it's caused by um, a sense of not being enough good at art. Avoiding comparison with other artists is quite impossible though, but a certain time looking at other artists' artworks becomes more intimidating than inspiring. I totally get that, especially when you compare yourself to just being like life in general, this person is doing this and that and you're still like living like still in bad sleeping while they're achieving all their goals um so i sometimes just um just remove myself from social media i don't look at anyone's feet i don't want to see what they're doing i'm just like blinders on and focusing on what i want to do and uh don't start because like, sometimes you don't even do this intentionally you just start like you see this person doing this that this is this amazing art piece that she created and she went to this place and then you're like, oh my gosh, and, and what the, like, and you question everything around you. And um, so sometimes having just getting off social media, just focusing on your thing that you want to do, your own art. And then if, for example, um, like sometimes it's necessary to look around what other artists are doing, just be, so, just so to see what's, what like, to get inspired by new techniques, new art styles or no ideas, how they, for example, paint a certain thing, but never like, I want to do exactly like this person, never like this. You want to just um, sometimes look at the art piece and uh, look at art, all, all the things that you like, and then just maybe uh, try something similar and, and figure out how they did that, or maybe take a class from this person and learn with those, those people. Because, um, you, you don't want to see this person as you want to become like this person. You want to just learn and uh, eventually use this knowledge into your own art. So blinders on and sometimes just use it as, as an opportunity to learn. And then again, blinders on, focus on yourself. Um, like this is, especially now with social media, everyone also don't compare your behind the scenes with someone's highlight reel because you never know how many million paintings they had to create to post this perfect painting on Instagram. So never, never like think of that. Like you might sit on your 10th attempt, but maybe this other person also just finished their 30th attempt and then they finished this. Um, what else here? I think that was all. Um, Maria asks, my question is for you, is where do you find your inspiration and how do you, do you think outside the box? Um, outside the box, sometimes it's just like uh, picking different colors, looking into just something completely different. Like for example, you could go on Pinterest and look at cake designs or fashion or beauty. And then you see something like um, different patterns, different designs. And then you see, okay, this is um, that could use this element and this element and combine them somehow. And it's just like, like being creative is basically problem solving and thinking outside the box and being willing to play and experiment. Um, even if you don't have an idea, um, just play. And sometimes having just limited time or limited um, resource, for example, you can only use this color and this tool and then, okay, now you need to create something in 15 minutes. And then you just, boom, like you're like, you have to do this and then all of a sudden something new ideas come out so you just in the process like sometimes just sitting there waiting for a good idea it's usually never never works you just need to start and eventually during the process the ideas will come um i think that was all yeah um Um, Rin, you ask, I'm very curious to know how to develop a personal art style and your own. Um, most of what I do are recreations of others' works, and I would love to change that. Again, um, just learn different techniques, learn how people paint their paintings, and then just challenge yourself. Look at a reference picture, for example, and then 
uh, think about how can you make it your own? Like, let's start with, let's recreate it similar or just like using the techniques you learned and then think about how can you do it differently? How, what other techniques can you implement? How can you make it different? Because I totally understand that like, you sometimes watch tutorials and then you recreate, watch tutorials, recreate, and then you never feel like you create something on your own. That's why it's important to learn. At the same time, you also want to challenge yourself to use the knowledge that you learned from the tutorial and recreate something on your own. So, so you don't get like you get into the habit of knowing. Okay, I know this technique, this technique, and these are uh, the different techniques. Now I will just uh, use this reference and paint for myself. And then the more you do this, the more you get better at it as well. Mm. Mm, let's see here. Uh, Yeah, I think I answered all the questions. The, the ones I have there are pretty similar. So if you have more questions, just let me know in the comments. Um, and I will answer some more. Oh my gosh, almost one hour. I feel like I answered three questions or something and it's already so late. Mm. Hey, Naomi. Naomi asks, what is my favorite medium? I, sometimes, I used to switch around a lot. Like I used to um, paint acrylic, gouache, watercolors, and go back to acrylics. Well, sometimes, but then I realized, okay, I really want to get better at one thing. I sometimes got bored with one thing and then I changed to another medium. But then I realized I can also just challenge myself. Like, for example, if I only painted some, I don't know, like um, landscapes, for example, in a certain style in watercolor, then let's learn something new, like new technique. And then it's already exciting. Like you, if you get bored with something, doesn't mean you need to change the complete medium. Just paint something completely out of, outside your comfort zone. So watercolors is currently my go-to because I was writing the book. I launched my course and I like I couldn't like do different things at once. Um, mm -mm. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, Kanchan, how can I tell you how to start an art career in teenage years? Um, you uh, need to think about that. Start focusing on practicing and painting and learning. Look into how, like on the, on the internet, there are so many resources to like how to start an Etsy shop, how to start um, like uh, some other, like for example, print on demand things. But because if you are underage, I'm not sure, like I'm not sure how the legal things are. So we need to talk to your parents, I assume. Um, so excited, visual mind, so excited for your book. Did you write in German or English? I wrote it in English. I first started, I first started writing it with a German publisher and it was such such a pain. I was like, I don't even know how to write in German anymore. That sounds like me. Like I felt like it was a, a robot writing this book. And and then I also had the problems with the publisher that I like I decided, okay, I'm not going with this publisher. And then I changed the publisher and I started writing it in English. And I felt like so much like it was already like a natural thing because I already already talked and written in English. I already felt like I have a voice. Um, so yeah. Mm -mm. Which medium is the hardest for you? Um, I have, I don't know. Like I never think about what is difficult for me. I'm just do it and like try things out. Um, do you do portraits? Uh, not really right now. I used to do a, a more, but I need to go back to at some point. Uh, please, can you tell are cumlin cakes as good as cumlin tubes? I have no idea. We don't have those in in our country. Um, all right, so let's see here. Uh, I will answer one more question, and then I think it would be the live stream. It was pretty long already. Um, what are you thinking to do in the future? Um, just challenging myself, doing things that are um, that completely out of my comfort zone, like writing the book was completely out of my comfort zone. So I uh, excited and scared at the same time, um, focus on creating more courses, helping you with your art journey. Um, yeah, 
let's see like this is i i don't want to do like for example on youtube i did so long and i felt like i'm doing this the same thing the same thing i just need to do something new that's why i'm trying different things right now mm. Um, journal with Tanish. What is the first secret of painting for beginners? Good watercolor paper. Definitely. If you have good watercolor paper, your, your painting is half done. Um, uh, Adia, I'm a beginner. Should I invest in art materials? Yeah, like if you can, like I would, if you if you can afford, I would go for something that you can afford and it's good quality because um, just because you're a beginner doesn't mean you need to start with super cheap stuff because you might never end uh, feeling like, okay, now I'm ready to invest in good quality supplies because you already get discouraged by your uh, bad supplies. So um, look into supplies that are decent quality at least and then um, go from there. Um, all right, I think this was all. I think it's already like one hour. Gosh. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, we should do this more often. Uh, if you have more questions, you can ask. Like I have in the community tab, I have a post um, with questions. Like I asked you to submit questions. If you have more questions, just add them there, and I might do a video about that or make a, a yeah do a, maybe a live stream on my Instagram or YouTube or just make a video and answer the questions. Just just let me know in, in, in the community tab. Um, yeah, and also I have a Facebook group, the Roadmap to Watercolor Painting. If you need a community where you want to share your art and get feedback, join it. Um, yeah, so have a wonderful day, uh, weekend, and I'll see you in, yeah, in the next video and a live stream on social media. And I wish you all the best. Take care and stay safe. Bye, guys.